Namaskaram dear friends. In this video, I shall put the recent most updates of GINA guidelines 2023 pertaining to the pediatric age group only. The first and the foremost is that GINA has clarified certain terminologies. Thus, maintenance treatment is that which is prescribed for use every day on a regular basis even if the symptoms are not present. Controller treatment, in short, you can understand that it is an ICS that is inhaled corticosteroid containing treatment. It targets both domains of asthma control and the two domains are control of symptoms and control of the risk of future exacerbations. Reliever you can understand as rescue inhalers. These are asthma inhalers taken on an SOS basis for quick relief of the symptoms of asthma. Anti-inflammatory reliever therapy that is AIR is a new terminology which has been added in 2023. It contains both a low dose inhaled corticosteroid and a rapid acting bronchodilator. That is in this case it is butazonide formiterol and or beclomethasone formiterol and ICS salbutamol combination as well. non formiterol lavas in combination with inhaled corticosteroids cannot be used as relievers because formiterol is the only lava that is long acting beta agonist which has the advantage of a very rapid onset of action that is 2 to 3 minutes which is almost equivalent to that of salbutamol a short acting beta agonist and also the advantage is that the effect lasts for long that is up to 12 hours then mart or maintenance and reliever therapy is a treatment regimen in which the patient uses an ICS formiterol inhaler every day for maintenance and also uses the same inhaler whenever there is an exacerbation of the asthmatic symptoms that is as reliever dose. Earlier MART was also referred to as SMART that is single inhaler both for maintenance and reliever therapy. The meaning of MART and SMART is however the same. A new commentary has been added in these guidelines in the asthma management cycle. Now what is this commentary? The cycle is assess, adjust and review. Now what do you have to assess? You have to first confirm the diagnosis of asthma if necessary and assess symptom control and modifiable risk factors, assess comorbidities, assess inhaler technique and adherence and assess patient preferences and goals. You must adjust the treatment of modifiable risk factors and comorbidities, adjust non-pharmacological strategies, adjust the asthma medications and adjust education and skill training of the patient. You must review the symptoms, review exacerbations, review side effects, review lung functions, review comorbidities and review the patient satisfaction. Then you all of us must by this time everyone must be clear that in any age group the GINA gives two tracks of treatment options. First is the preferred controller and reliever therapy and track two is the alternative control and reliever therapy which is to be used only and only when this is not available. So the change is that in the second track that is alternative controller and reliever therapy GINA in 2023 has added as needed SABA for the treatment figure in for adolescents and adults. This is the most important edition of GINA 2023 that is it has given a practical guidance on medications and doses for GINA track 1. So these are the steps of treatment. This is the age group and the dosage has been mentioned like budesonide for meterol 200 by 6 that is 200 micrograms budesonide and 6 micrograms for meterol or budesonide 200 actually the delivered dose is 160 microgram of budesonide and 4.5 microgram of for meterol and the dosage which is to be used with a dry powdered inhaler is one inhalation whenever it is required this is for steps 1 and 2 that is this acts as an anti-inflammatory anti-inflammatory reliever therapy only. MART in step 3 has either 100 by 6 the delivered dose being 80 and 4.5 or 200 by 6 in age group 6 to 12, 12 to 17 and in more than equal to 18 years the, do, the combinations can be 
ब्यूड्रेसनाइट फॉर्मेटोरॉल टू हंड्रेड बाय सिक्स और बेक्लोमेथासन फॉर्मेटोरॉल हंड्रेड बाय सिक्स एंड द डोज विद डी पी आई इज वन इनहेलेशन वंस और ट्वाइस डेली वंस फॉर चिल्ड्रेन प्लस वन इनहेलेशन दैट इज रिक्वायर्ड ऑन एन एस ओ एस बेसिस सिमिलरली यू कैन रीड थ्रू द स्टेप्स थ्री स्टेप्स फोर एंड स्टेप्स फाइव फॉर डिफरेंट एज ग्रुप सिक्स टू इलेवन ट्वेल्व टू सेवेंटीन मोर देन इक्वल टू एटीन ईयर्स इन दिस यू मस्ट बी क्लियर दैट फॉर सिक्स टू इलेवन ईयर्स हंड्रेड बाय सिक्स कॉम्बिनेशन इज प्रफर्ड बाय इन ट्वेल्व टू सेवेंटीन ईयर्स टू हंड्रेड बाय सिक्स कॉम्बिनेशन इज प्रफर्ड एंड इन मोर देन इक्वल टू एटीन ईयर्स ऑफ एज यू शुड यूज टू हंड्रेड बाय सिक्स और यू हैव अनदर ऑप्शन ऑफ बेक्लोमेथासन एंड फॉर्मोटोरॉल कॉम्बिनेशन and in each step you have to increase the number of inhalations that is from one inhalation once or twice daily to two inhalations twice daily plus as needed is definitely being there now low dose ics formoterol is referred to as anti inflammatory reliever therapy here because it relieves the symptoms as well as it reduces the inflammations and this therapy significantly reduces the risk of severe exacerbations compared with using a saba reliever alone The recommended mat, as I have already told you, is budesonide formoterol DPI. I am talking of DPI, is 200 by 6 or 100 by 6, and beclomethasone formoterol 100 by 6. Now, if you are prescribing this with DPI, the dosage is this. But for prescribing AIR only or mat with budesonide formoterol via pressurized MDI, that is PMDI, with or without spacer, you must use an inhaler with half the strength of that for the relevant DPI. and double the number of doses now for example at step 4 for a patient more than 12 years of age if you are using pre, uh, if you are using budesonide formoterol use pressurized mdi of 100 by 3 microgram inhalation per meter dose and take four inhalations twice daily uh, instead of two inhalations with uh, dpi and give two inhalations on an sos basis instead of one inhalation with dpi Now the point of transition from as needed reliever to regular maintenance and reliever is actually dependent on the patient and the prescriber preferences. But in case there is increased beta two agonist rescue medication use, then this is a marker for a marker of poor asthma control, and poor asthma control will respond to higher doses of regular inhaled corticosteroid therapy instead of giving frequent beta agonists. So a simple guide is. that if a patient is using their inhaler more than 7 actuations per week that is at least one per day then the logical step would be add to add two additional daily maintenance actuations and thereby mean stepping up the patient by one step but this should not go beyond step 3 any patient who is using the reliever on an average between 2 to 7 times the maintenance dose should be left unchanged and if they are using for no more than two occasions per week then the maintenance dose can be reduced by one but definitely not less than step one that is single actuation of uh, budesonide formoterol combination should be used on an sos basis one must also remember that one should not take more than 12 doses of budesonide formoterol that is total as needed plus maintenance dose of 12 in a single day that is in more than 24 hours in less than 24 hours you must not include more than 12 doses that is not more than one dose every 2 hours another addition in jena 2023 is the addition of anti interleukin 5 antibody that is mepolizumab at step 5 for children with severe eosinophilic asthma after specialist referral and optimization of treatment then certain environmental considerations have been added for making an inhaler choice so if you have to select an optimal inhaler then you must first consider local availability access to the inhaler and cost factor since high cost can lead to non compliance then you must test the technique rectify and retest the technique after guiding the patient you must follow up is the patient satisfied with the medication and inhaler only then will he be adherent to it and you must also judge the environmental impact for example manufacturing propellant for pressurized mdi have a potential for recycle for recycling 
you must also remember four c's while making a choice of the inhaler devices and the four c's are choose check correct and confirm so you must choose the most appropriate inhaler device for pressurized mdis user spacer and ensure there are no physical barriers for example arthritis that limit the use of inhaler and avoid the use of multiple different types of inhaler whenever possible to avoid confusion for the patient you must just the ch- check the technique at every opportunity every visit ask the patient to show how to use the inhaler and don't just ask whether or not they know how to use it identify any error using the device basic specific checklist then you must show the patient how to use it correctly check the technique again and recheck the inhaler technique frequently because it is seen that after initial training errors generally recur within 4 to 6 weeks and clinicians should be able to demonstrate the correct technique for each of the inhalers which they prescribe actually dpis are not suitable for most children in less than equal to 5 years of age and some elderly patients also so pressurized mdis with spacers are the best option for these patients in jena 2023 an additional advice has been added on the management of asthma in low and middle income countries that is other controller options like long acting leukotriene receptor antagonist maintenance oral corticosteroids and low dose in inhaled corticosteroids whenever saba is taken for symptom relief has been may be considerably less effective and if at all is required the third because it contains inhaled corticosteroid this would be the closest to the preferred treatment options oral bronchodilators like salbutamol and theophylline tablets or solutions with oral corticosteroids should preferably not be used as they have a very slow onset of action several hours and more adverse effects than inhaled saba even occasional courses are associated with significant risk of short term adverse effects like pneumonia and sepsis and long term adverse effects in adults including osteoporosis fragility fractures cataract and diabetes in fact so much so that jena stresses that in 2023 it is not acceptable for any clinician to manage any kind of asthma with saba alone and oral corticosteroids instead of using preventive inhaled corticosteroid containing treatment now assessing asthma severity has a number of uh, flaws because the same terminologies are used in different manners in different situations now for example most clinical trials of biological therapy enroll patients with asthma that is uncontrolled despite medium or high dose ics lava but at the same time before labeling the patient as uncontrolled they will not assess and treat the other contributory factors like inhaler correct inhaler technique poor adherence or comorbidities before considering patient's eligibility for enrollment so like the clinical concept of asthma severity of asthma is based on difficulty to treat mild asthma is asthma which is well controlled with low intensity treatment in community and primary care the terms are commonly based on the frequency or severity of symptoms or exacerbations irrespective of treatment for example asthma is called severe if the patients have frequent or troublesome asthma symptoms regardless of their treatment and adherence etc in epidemiological studies similarly asthma is classified as mild moderate or severe based only on the treatment which has been prescribed by the global initiative for asthma control or british thoracic society step regardless of the patient's level of asthma control assuming that the prescribed treatment was appropriate for the patient's need so jinna has given an interim advice for using these terminologies in different parlance so for clinical practice severe asthma is that which remains uncontrolled despite optimized is the term if you are sure that the treatment is being taken correctly and still the patient is not responding then you can label the patient is having severe asthma optimize treatment with high dose ics laba or that which requires high dose ics laba to prevent it from becoming uncontrolled for health prof- professionals the term apparently mild asthma should be preferred to using mild asthma because whenever you use the term mild asthma the 
and the patients might think that they might not have a risk of exacerbations so you should use the term apparently mild asthma to stress the fact upon them that even mild patients having mild symptoms can suffer an acute severe exacerbation and for epidemiological studies use the describe describe the prescribed treatment without writing the severity for example instead of writing mild asthma you should mention patients prescribed saba with no ics for clinical trials you must describe the patient population by the level of asthma control and treatment for example write patients with uncontrolled asthma despite medium dose ics labo plus as needed saba rather than writing moderate asthma jina has also come up with three different terminologies which are rather confusing and have been used interchangeably by different clinicians first is uncontrolled asthma now uncontrolled asthma includes one or both of the following poor symptom control and frequent exacerbations difficult to treat asthma that is uncontrolled that is has both poor symptom control and frequent exacerbations or one of them despite prescribing medium or high dose ics with a second controller and which requires high dose treatment to maintain good symptom control and severe asthma is a subset of difficult to treat asthma that is it remains uncontrolled despite proper adherence to maximal optimized high dose ics laba and management of different contributory factors jena has also issued a new practical guide to manage asthma exacerbations there has there is isn't much very something very new in this like you must take a history of time of onset severity of symptoms any symptoms of anaphylaxis and all current and reliever medications including doses and devices adherence and recent dose changes and responses to correct therapy on examination you must look for exacerbation severity vital signs complicating factors signs of alternative conditions that could explain acute breathlessness for example cardiac failure acute laryngeal obstruction inhaled foreign body or pulmonary embolism then objective assessment should be done this is important and uh, something slightly new measurement of lung function has been stressed upon and should be done if possible without delaying treatment though it is not very feasible in children lung function should be monitored at 1 hour that is after administering three doses of inhaled sabas and at intervals until a clear response to treatment has occurred or a plateau is reached but this point is not very important for young children especially it may be suitable for older children and adolescents then oxygen saturation should be monitored with pulse oximetry like in if if at all you do not have the facility of pulse oximeter you must not wait for the pulse oximeter to be available before putting the patient on oxygen and you must rather use pulse oximetry to step down the oxygen therapy abgs as we all know is not routinely required and chest x ray as we all know is also not routinely required unless there are physical signs which could be suggestive of pneumothorax parenchymal disease or an inhaled foreign body along with we must administer the following treatments concurrently first is oxygen as you all know to achieve an arterial oxygen saturation of 93 to 95% but not to wait for pulse oximeter to be available before putting the child in oxygen and inhale short acting beta agonists which should be administered frequently in emergency room management and the most efficient delivery method is pressurized mdi with the spacer because the nebulizers carry a risk of spread of the respiratory vital viral infections so this is basically applicable from more than equal to 6 years of age when the patients are able to use pmdi with spacer the current evidence does not support the routine use of iv beta agonists in severe exacerbations epinephrine is indicated for anaphylaxis and angioedema systemic corticosteroids speed the resolution of exacerbations and prevent relapse and should be used in all except for mild exacerbations in adults adolescents and children between 6 to 11 years of age wherever possible systemic corticosteroids should be administered to the patient within 1 hour of presentation and systemic corticosteroids are very important especially if initial saba treatment fails to achieve lasting improvement 
exacerbation has developed while the patient was taking OCS and the patient has a history of previous exacerbations requiring oral corticosteroids. Oral administration is as effective as IV. For children, liquid formulation is preferred to tablets. Oral corticosteroids require at least 4 hours to produce a clinical improvement. IV corticosteroids can be administered when the patient is too dyspneic to swallow. For children, a prednisolone dose of 1 to 2 mg per kg up to a maximum 40 mg per day is suggested and the 3 to 5 day course is generally considered sufficient for most of the children. In children, inhaled corticosteroids with or without concomitant systemic corticosteroids within first hour of attendance to the emergency department might reduce the risk of hospital administration, admission and the need for systemic corticosteroids. IV aminophylline and theophylline as I have already told you earlier should not be used in acute management of exacerbations because of the poor efficacy and also low therapeutic index that is low, uh, dangerous safety profile. Magnesium is not recommended for routine use. Helium oxygen therapy has no role except for patients who do not respond to standard therapy. Leukotriene receptor antagonists have limited evidence. Antibiotics are not supported routinely. NIV has a weak evidence and sedations, sedatives are definitely to be avoided. Jinnah has issued two safety issues about the potential overestimation of oxygen saturation in dark skinned people and potential drug interactions between anti COVID 19 treatment and certain asthma medications, which are, however, primarily important for the adults. Other changes which have been done by Jinnah include imaging studies not routinely recommended only except for on to identify congenital anomalies and acute conditions like pneumothorax, pneumonia, etc. HRCT to identify conditions like bronchiectasis, emphysema, lung nodules, airway wall thickening and lung distension. CT sinuses can identify changes suggestive of chronic rhinosinusitis with or without nasal polyps which in patients with severe asthma may help with the choice of biological therapy. Pertussis has been added as an important differential for asthma. Then composite asthma control tools like Jina is, does not recommend tools that combine symptom control with exacerbation history. Results of pheno measurement should be interpreted cautiously. Digital interventions should be used for promoting adherence, especially in adolescents. An influenza vaccine is considered to be safe but there is insufficient evidence to recommend, recommend routine pneumococcal or pertussis vaccination, especially in adults with asthma. Now, there are certain issues to consider while transitioning adolescents from pediatric to adult care, and this should take into account their rapid physical, emotional, cognitive, and social changes. And transitioning should not be based on chronological age, but on developmental age. Technology-assisted interventions should be used. Adolescents should be counseled separately other than from parent and caregiver and information self-management strategies should be tailored according to the patient's stage of psychosocial development and desire for autonomy. Non-pharmacological strategies stressed by Jinnah 23 are avoiding medications that make asthma worse, avoiding indoor and outdoor allergens, this is very important, avoiding food and food chemicals in patients with food allergy, healthy diet, promoting weight reduction, promoting breathing exercises and pranayam, and dealing with emotional stress. This is a sample asthma action plan. Now, which can be given to the patients. It has not been given by Jinnah 23 and has been taken from this website. And this is not the exact one, but you can get an idea of as to how to give an asthma action plan to your patient. So the key take home points which we can take from Jena 2023 rather I take home are inhaled corticosteroid LABA combination has to be used always as needed maintenance and reliever therapy is to be used as anti-inflammatory reliever that is on an SOS basis in steps 1 and 2. No LABA other than formiterol can be used in MART because no other LABA will have reliever characteristics as formiterol has a very small duration of 
onset of action like 2 to 3 minutes only no other beta agonist for example salbutamol can be used as combination in mart that is maintenance and reliever therapy therapy since it won't have maintenance characteristics before deciding on step up or step down the treatment one must look at and confirm four c's saba alone should be used in emergency room management only iv beta agonists are to be avoided even in emergency room management of asthma exacerbation inhaled corticosteroids are to be preferred to oral corticosteroids within the first hour of emergency room management digital interventions for example setting up reminders etc are to be promoted to promote adherence in medication especially in adolescents and non pharmacological strategies have as well been stressed upon summarizing the 10 key points of jina 2023 jina has clarified terminologies had it commentary to adjust assess adjust review cycle as needed saba has been added as an alternative controller and reliever therapy reliever therapy rather it has given guidance on asthma medications and doses mepolizumab mepolizumab has been added at step 5 environmental considerations are to be made before making a choice of inhaler asthma management in low middle income countries has been specified the terms related to asthma severity like uncontrolled difficult to treat and severe asthma have been clarified managing exacerbations have been clarified and transitioning of care and non pharmacological strategies have also been told of these guidance on asthma medications and doses addition of mepolizumab at step 5 environmental considerations for inhaler choice for cs that is choose check correct and confirm and terms related to asthma severity like uncontrolled difficult to treat and severe are the actual new additions to jina 23 thank you so very much for a patient listening and please do share the knowledge thank you so much